Robert E. Howard, creator of Conan the Barbarian. And, of course, also Call the Conqueror, and Red Sonja, and Cult Solomon Kane. Though, Howard's version of Red Sonja has only a name in common with the character that most readers think of. There is Michael Moorcock, creator of Elric of Melnimini, whose stories I need to review in this future. Dorian Hockmoon Van Kuhn, whose main trilogy I previously reviewed. Corum, Erdikuze, and others. There's Tanith Lee, author of the Flat Earth Cycle, which, once again, I need to review. And then there's the author whose work I'm discussing today, Fritz Lieber, creator of Fafford and the Grey Mauser. And this time I'm taking a look at the chronologically first outing of his adventurers, Swords and Deviltry. This is a collection of three major stories. The first story, The Snow Woman, follows Fafford. Fafford is a member of a northern tribe of barbarians from Nawan's Cold Wastes, but several things distinguish him from, well, another classic barbarian from a northern tribe, Conan the Barbarian. First, Fafford is fairly young, and he has the looks to match. Second, unlike Conan, who Howard wrote as having culture and civilization in a degree of contempt, Fafford is infatuated with it. He comes to understand over the course of the story the hypocrisies of civilization, but he also completely understands the hypocrisies of barbarian life as well, and thus learning the hypocrisies of civilization doesn't tarnish it, doesn't make it less appealing, it's just he understands it be uh, better. It's equal in certain ways to barbarian life than inferior to it. In Fafford's story, he falls in love with one of the performers of a traveling troupe, Falana, and learns that she was once a freelance thief in Lankmar, along with a now-dead partner. Now, this is a no-no for several reasons. First, the Thieves' Guild does not permit freelance thieves, and second, the Guild doesn't allow for the admission of women, so she couldn't actually legitimately join the Guild in the first place. Valana and her partner were marked for death by the Guild, and after Valana's partner died, she skipped out of Lankmar and ended up with this group of performers. Ultimately, Fafford and Valana end up fleeing the Cold Wastes, escaping from Fafford's murderously controlling mother and several members of Fafford's tribe, who were in turn, the members of the tribe that is, paid off by a member of the Thieves' Guild who had infiltrated the acting troupe. The Snow Woman is a great story. The story is fun, and the Libra does a great job here of truly distinguishing Fafford as a character that's distinct and different from Conan. Like Howard's Conan, as opposed to Arnie's Conan, Fafford is a clever, educated, and well-spoken protagonist. However, as mentioned before, Fafford, unlike Conan, even Howard's Conan, does not hold civilization in contempt. Further, his views on women likely reflect the views that someone in his society would have for women. He holds them in respect and esteem, but he does have the problem of putting women from civilization on a pedestal. Also, Fafford abandons his fiancée, who is pregnant with his child. On the one hand, the circumstances behind his departure make sense. His mother is going to kill him. On the other hand, it still rubs me slightly the wrong way. The second story, The Unholy Grail, follows the Grey Mauser. Before becoming a thief by trade, the Mauser was known as Mouse, and was an apprentice wizard to a white magician named Galavis Rowe. However, while Mouse has also been learning white magic, he has been secretly teaching himself black magic as well. So, when Galavis Rowe is murdered by the forces of Duke Tenarl, a local ruler who hates magic and whose daughter, Ivrian, was being taught by Glavis Rowe, the Mauser swears vengeance and uses black magic to wreak a campaign of revenge against Gennaro. The story climaxes with the Mauser's capture. Gennaro has the Mauser tortured, with himself and Irian looking on. Mauser uses his black magic and the pain from the torture to fuel a spell that, focused through Irian, kills Gennaro spectacularly, causing Gennaro's retainers to flee the castle and in turn for Irian to free the Mauser and for the two to escape. The Unholy Grail almost works, but it's got some significant issues. Irvin is the kind of character that we now describe as a Moe blob. She's an emotionally fragile character who's written as being perpetually on the brink of tears. She has no real narrative agency. When she acts, she acts because of the direction of a male character. 
either someone telling her to do a thing or someone telling her not to do a thing, but doing it out of defiance on behalf of another male character. This is more striking because we get her story directly in contrast in this book with Valana's backstory. Valana is a woman who takes shit from no one. She's had her own adventures prior to the start of the Snow Women, and, her, and she goes into the story with her own plan, which she crafted herself, and which she's carrying out throughout the story's advance. Fafford's story serves as a wrinkle in her own story, but Valana's story is her own. By comparison, Irvine is defined more by her lack of agency. Even the backstory that's established for her further defines this. She's woefully mistreated by her father, who mistreated her in turn because he couldn't cow and control her mother. The final story in the collection is Ill Met in Lankbar, the first team-up of Fafford and the Mauser, and the beginning of their adventuring career. The two encounter each other while robbing two members of the Thieves' Guild, but not killing them, and slaying their, their escort. However, Fafford and the Mauser failed to slay a mysterious rodent-ish creature, which scampers off into the night. Our two heroes go to where Fafford and Valana are staying, and then in turn, the three come to Mauser and Ivrian's hideout. The four hang out, hit it off incredibly well, and then in a state of intoxication, Ivrian ropes the Mauser into Valana's plan of revenge, and the two basically shame Fafford and the Mauser, who had been planning to talk Valana out of her plan, and sneaking into the Thieves' Guild on a scouting mission. The two set off, and we get a tour of the guild, including seeing the guild sorcerer, Christo Milo, in the middle of some dark and sinister ritual. The guild master of the Thieves' Guild, Krovis, sees through Fafford and the Mauser's disguises pretty much right away, and then when Fafford and the Mauser are ID'd by the two thieves that they overpowered, our heroes have to fight their way out of the guild and return home. On returning to the Mauser's hideout, they discover the nature of Christo Milo's spell. Valana and Ivrian had been slain by horrible rodent monsters, and the loot was taken. Fafford and the Mauser return to the guild, slay their way through the guild to reach Hislomilo, and cut him down, using Valana's dagger to strike the killing blow. Looking upon their handiwork with disgust, they take their loot and leave the city. Ilmant and Lankmar starts incredibly strong. It paints a vivid picture of both Lankmar as a city and the places of Fafford and the Grey Mauser and their loves in the city, along with the guild and its position and place of power in the city. In fact, heck, the Thieves' Guild, as written in this universe, makes sense as an entity within the context of the world. A lot of other war stories, when Thieves' Guilds come up, they don't quite make sense. They don't quite fit in the context, because oftentimes they exist as a pastiche or an homage to Lankmar, to Lieber. Here, it fits. It makes sense why the Thieves' Guild exists, why it's here, and why it persists. Also, the four leads, Fafford and Vlana, the Mauser and Ivrian, all have tremendous chemistry, which makes it such a goddamn shame that this is the only story where the four are really together and able to interact for any length of time. It means that Vlana, an active character with her own agenda, ends up dying in a not entirely passive fashion. She does skewer a monster rat before she dies, but she dies for the motivation of a male character. She dies for Fafford's motivation. Now, I understand why Lieber made this decision when he wrote the story, this book, and this story in particular, were published after a whole slew of stories of Fafford and the Mauser were written, and some of the earliest stories of the duo had already established that Vlana and Ivrian had been slain through the magics of the Thief Guild sorcerer, who Fafford and the Mauser had in turn slain. And that said, the advantage of what this book truly is, a prequel, is it allows you, theory, to have the chance to go back and to tell more stories with these characters together before everything goes to crap. Just having one or two more stories with this quartet together would have been wonderful, and given so much more weight to Fafford and the Mauser's response, like the, the, their own vindictive and hate for the Thieves' Guild after Valana and Evian's death. Still, this book is a wonderful introduction to Mwan, and with it, Lankmar and its 10,000 smokes. And there are merits to a story that makes you crave more, 
over a bunch of stories that overstay their welcome. So, I will return to Faffer and the Grey Mauser at some point in the future, but in the meantime, what swords and sorcery authors and characters would you conjure by? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to put your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.